Hey Sainers, welcome back to Saints TV Weekly for Monday, the 13th of March, Labor Day. It is the week of round one, and we just want to quickly mention, again, another big season of Saints footy means another big season of Saints TV Weekly, and we are very happy to have Inglewood Coffee Roasters back on board, so thanks to everyone for jumping on board last week and purchasing some coffee, tea, and chai. As you know, you get 40% off um, on all of those products thanks to discount code SAINTS40. So if you want to get some of that stuff, go to inglewoodcoffeeroasters.com.au, use the discount code SAINTS40, and you get 40% off. Okay, so it is the week of round one. We know that. This is a big week. It's Monday. We play on Sunday, the last game of the round, so it still feels like it's a fair while away, but... It is, it is the week of, so very, very excited. There's a lot happening, and there was a lot happening last week um, after the Pracky game against the Bombers, and in classic Saints style, there was uh, a bit of a audio leak, a bit of uh, a bit of behind-the-goal action that was leaked um, from the coach's box, and this went up on a portal that was shared by all AFL clubs, and basically... Uh, from what I've heard, there's not that much in that recording that is a, a dead giveaway to the way we're going to play, but it's still nonetheless not a great look when every other club is following the process and we upload with full audio and they can listen for a couple of hours before then we realize to take it down. So the club did release a statement on this. Um, they said, you know, St Kilda Football Club can confirm that a file containing audio from the coach's box during last week's official AFL practice game against Essendon was uploaded to league-wide shared folder in error on Saturday morning. As soon as the club was made aware some hours later, the file was immediately taken down and replaced with a muted version as is standard protocol. I believe there was, uh, you know, some pretty strong words spoken internally after this from Rossi to the players and, and uh, you know, a number of other staff. And rightly so, this is not a way to start a season, but we we can recover from this. You know, there's, there's, not, there's not much there that is going to, ruin our chances of winning a flag you know it's already difficult as it is let's be fair there's a lot of very very good teams this year and we're in transition um in in whatever way you want to interpret that word but we are in transition whether it's you know in a rebuild which i don't believe or it's more transition from ratten to to ross lyon so there's a lot to learn there but not a ideal start to uh, the build-up to round one, but that's what happened last week. That was kind of the big news apart from just general training. Anthony Caminiti, there's a lot of word on him debuting this week, which I think is very, very likely. We really don't have anyone playing full forward. Tim Membry still, I believe, touch and go. Seb Ross, the same. There's a few players up in the air there. Uh, obviously, Mateus Filippo is a big chance of debuting. I think I'd be very surprised if he didn't play this weekend. Well, didn't play for the first 10 weeks, to be honest. Um, you know... The back off the back of his preseason and the way he was going, his confidence, the you know the amount of praise that he gets from Ross Lyon, I think you can expect him to run out in the red, white, and black on Sunday at four forty, which is going to be amazing. Um, there was some other good news uh, during the week, and this was from the Kingston Woman of the Year Awards. Um, and yeah, congratulations to Auntie Katrina Amon. Uh, with her Courageous Commitment Award she won at the 2023 Kingston Women of the Year Award. So she's done an amazing amount of work um, to lead the club's growing support in the First Nations and education space, and she's been doing that for, I think, a couple of years now. Um, and yeah, very, very deserved award there for for Auntie Katrina. So congratulations to her. Um, continuing on um, the theme of AFLW, uh, it's... A bit sad to say that we're losing Kate Shearlaw and Tani White, especially Tani White. What are you, like? They both had outstanding years last year, but Tani White was, you know, a revelation. I thought, um, and to see them to see them leave the club is is really really upsetting. I thought we're starting to build a really solid nucleus um, with Nikki Dell uh, Nikki Dell's side, but um, yeah, they're off and. Um, that's that's the you know that's the name of the game in the AFLW. If another club comes calling, offering a bit more, it's very hard to match. Um, and yeah, so we wish them all the best. But on the flip side, we do get a couple of pretty decent players as well. We get former Magpie Steph Chiocci and Jamie Lambert. Um, well, both of them former Magpies, mind you. Both very good players. So we lose Kate Sheila and Tiny White, but we do gain Steph Chiocci and Jamie Lambert. Um, so that's a pretty high caliber trade. That's uh, a big day, really, losing those two and then gaining those two. So um, fingers crossed 
that works, that works out, and we don't really feel the loss of Kate Sheeler and Tiny White. But when you've got a really good player at one end kicking goals, taking marks, and you've got another good player at the other end just tackling everyone and really being a contested beast, um, they're two pretty important positions. Um, and if you've got two good players there, you, you're doing all right. But uh, we've lost them now, so hopefully these two former Magpies can come in and, and do a really good job. Okay, now on to the mini match preview. Thanks to Inglewood Coffee. Let's do it. Round one, Fremantle, 440, Marvel Stadium, Sunday. Bring it on. We're playing a team that a lot of people have in their eight, but also a lot of people think are going to just suddenly drop out and not be a good team anymore, which I don't really agree with. I think Frio have got a good nucleus of young and a lot of experience. Nat Fife looks like a monster. They're, they're going to be a very tough opponent come round one, especially when we're still trying to learn the way, if you will. So they've got a lot of tall players. Obviously, they've got Darcy. They've got um, well, they've got Tabernay. He plays tall, but he's not tall. They've lost um, Lob, so that's one that uh, used to tear us up. He did last year. He killed us at Marvel last year, so they don't have him anymore. Um, but just all over the ground, they do have some height compared to us. You know, even when we had our full team with Kingy with Hayes, they would still be probably as tall. But now they're they're going to have a big advantage in that aerial space and I think for us we need to capitalize on our smalls we've got more smalls than them we've got better smalls than them I think and you get Gresh in form you get Butler in form Higo um, I think there's going to be you know some rotations there hopefully Gresh can rotate forward that'd be a real advantage because he's always good for a goal um, obviously Jack Billings is injured but again when he's fit that's another small to throw into that forward line um, and then you've got the likes of uh, Mitch Owens, who's going to play tall. It's a big responsibility for the young kid. Then you've got Kamenita, who's going to have to play that full forward position against a very, very good Fremantle back line, if not one of the best in the competition. Um, and then the midfield battle is huge. You know, Rowan Marshall against Darcy, massive. They always have good battles. A lot of their best performances last year, Fremantle, were really driven by their midfield, by Darcy, by Brayshaw, uh, Mundy. They've got some very, very good players. They're obviously, Fife is going to play predominantly forward I would say um, and with you know kind of our I wouldn't say weakened backline but with our fairly light framed backline Nat Fife will be looking at that going this is all right get me one on one in a goal square and we'll see what we can do so I don't know Josh Battle maybe goes to Nat Fife when he plays forward Cal Wilkie obviously can play on anyone so there's a big chance that he can do that Dugues, I'm not sure, has the the one-on-one capability. Dugues likes to run and punch. But if you get into a sort of, uh, you know, body-on-body wrestle with Nat Fife, I don't think he's coming out on top there. So it's a massive game. I I have have tipped us. I'll I'll give that away. And uh, it's a quick little plug to... We've launched a tipping competition. A lot of people wanted this, and we've done it. We've launched a tipping competition. SaintsTV.com.au forward slash tipping. $10 buy-in. There are weekly prizes. A lot of Saints merch to give away. Signed 2023 Guernsey uh, as the final prize with cash prize as well on top of that. If you're leading at the halfway mark, you will get a free choice of any game you want. We'll buy you a ticket to that game. There are some good prizes there, and we are giving a portion away to charity. Charity to be decided, but at the moment we're thinking probably Maddie's vision to keep it in the Saints family. But um, that's to be decided. But yeah, $10 buy-in, a lot of prizes. Some of it goes to charity. We've got a lot of people signing up already, so it's filling up quick. Make sure you get in, saintstv.com.au forward slash tipping. Yeah, I am feeling quietly optimistic, but I mean, that's kind of how I always feel. And then it just backfires and um, blows up in my face. So I'm going into this game fairly open-minded. Um, there is open training session today. I don't know if, when this video is going to come out, but there is an open training session Monday from 11 to 12.30, so I'll go and check that out. My tip, I've gone Saints by 13, and I think Filippo, keep an eye out, Rising Star Nation round one. I reckon he can go two goals and acquire 20 disposals. That'd be nice. So I'll leave it there, Sainers. Thank you very much for watching. The Saints TV podcast will be out tonight. Match preview will be out, I think, on Wednesday. We've got Saints TV live uh, with the boys on Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. So keep an eye out for that. They did their first show last week and it was very well received. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. And yeah, most importantly, like this video, comment your thoughts. How are you feeling leading up to round one? And subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Let's get to 10,000 subs this year. There's also another video that came out, not on this channel, but it's on the AFL channel. 
um, and I got to chat with a bunch of other AFL YouTubers um, about sort of predictions of the season, a lot of banter, a lot of footy talk. So that's on the AFL YouTube channel as well if you're interested. So I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week for another video on Saints TV Weekly. But until then, enjoy your week and go you mighty Sainers. See you Sunday, boys.